Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Recording Made Easy .com and here on my YouTube channel. And this is part number three of looking at Studio One version five and some of the third party plugin issues that we have had recently. I'm creating these videos due to all the comments that I've been getting over the last few videos and people have asked me to test out certain kinds of plugins and I wanna go ahead and do that for you. So before we jump into part three, we're gonna take a look at the T-Rex plugins this time. We're gonna take a look at some Slate Digital plugins, not Trigger because we've already looked at Trigger in part one and that's the one that was giving me a problem. And we're gonna look at some Steven Slate Drums SSD5 and see how they perform. But before we get started, I wanna make sure at the beginning of all these videos, I set a couple of ground rules so people are clear on what these videos are intended for, especially if you didn't see parts one, two, one and two. Okay, ground rule number one. Um, this is not, and these videos are not in any way, shape, or form intended to bash PreSonus or to bash Studio One. These are here because I'm trying to help my followers and my students who have asked me dozens and dozens of times through email, comments on Facebook and YouTube and through email. Since version five comes out, what do I think? The problems that I was having that I shown in my last several videos, um, wanted to know with the newest update, the newest update, by the way, as of the recording of this video is 5.0.1. Has it fixed any of the problems with specific types of plugins? And that's what I'm here to do. It's also here as a way to maybe help PreSonus along the way, because I can assure you that people from PreSonus watch a lot of my YouTube videos when it pertains to Studio One. I know this because they tell me. So by you guys commenting below and by me showing some of these issues, it may also give them some ammunition to go ahead and get some of these little buggy things fixed if it in fact is Studio One and or work with their third-party plugin manufacturer um, colleagues to see if they can get their plugins to all behave nicely like they've always had in versions 2.5 through 4.6. So again, these are not here to to just, you know, um, to say anything negative about Studio One or about PreSonus. That's not why I'm doing these. I'm doing these to try to help. Ground rule number one. Ground rule number two is... Yes, leave a comment below and let us know about your issues. If it's working, if it's not working well for you, what are your specific problems? But more importantly, go out to the PreSonus website and leave a support ticket, okay? Well, they're not gonna be able to fix the problem if we don't communicate with them. And the best way to do that is through the support ticket system. I'll try to remember to leave the link in the description box below, but if you go out to PreSonus.com and log into your user account, you can go to the support ticket uh, page, leave a support ticket, let them know what your problem is, and they will try to get it fixed. But you also want to leave some comments below here because, you know, again, the more we talk about these things, the more we raise it to the level of, uh, of, the, of the top, you know, uh, maybe we can get these things fixed. Um, ground rule number three, or just point number three, also be sure to use the PreSonus user forums. Okay, those are very helpful. Another place where you can get some information, let people know about the problem. You may find some other users that had the same problem. That's not, and it's not really related to Studio One Five. Maybe you think it is. There may be something else in your computer that needs to be tweaked or whatever. And there's a lot of helpful people there. So make sure that you leave a, a, a comment or leave a post in the PreSonus user form. And then lastly, also when you leave comments below and tell us about some of the issues that you're having, or if it's running well well for you. I'd like to know that as well. I want to know if everything's working good for you too. Leave me your computer specs in the comments. Are you running a Mac or PC? What version of the operating system are you running on either platform? What's your, uh, how many gigs of RAM do you have? Okay. And, and, and more specifically, what exactly is your issue? Is it a plugin related thing? Is it a workflow thing? What is causing you the problem? The more specific you could be, the better. It helps everybody out. And it also, again, helps PreSonus get a hold of some of this information. So those are the ground rules. Again, oh, and lastly, goes without saying, you know, again, be respectful. Don't be nasty, vulgar language and all that stuff. Um, if you're there to just say a bunch of derogatory things about anybody or any company, I'm just going to delete the comment. No one will see it anyway. So let's make this constructive. So far, it's been very good. There's only been a couple of deleted comments and that's what this is for. Okay, so here we go. So let's jump in here to Studio One. Again, there's no plugins on this session whatsoever. We're gonna take a look, let's see, part three. Okay, the first thing that people asked me about was, um, was T-Rex, okay? How does T-Rex behave? I don't know, I haven't tried it. So we're gonna try it now. So let me go to T-Rex. Let me drop a couple of plugins on here and let's just see how Studio One behaves. Where is it? It's IK Multimedia. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's just take the TA, the T at 576. 
beautiful interface. Okay, so the first thing I'm have been checking and what really kind of uh, started this whole video series was when I started to try to use samples in Slate Trigger 2. The first thing I noticed is when I try to move the, the GUI around, the interface around, it was very laggy, very choppy when I would play audio back through it. The meters in PreSonus would be very hesitant, very, very have a lot of latency. Um, so that's the first thing I'm checking. This seems to be okay. Let's just play back. I could put this on uh, on our drum bus here. I'm just gonna play back audio very light, quietly. Let's just make sure that we could pass audio. Okay, seems to be okay. Okay, so that one seems to work. We'll put a few, oh, if people wanna know my computer specs in case you didn't see the last series of videos, just so you know, I am running uh, Mac Mojave, a 2017 iMac Pro with a six core processor, 3.2 gigahertz with 64 gigs of RAM. Again, same computer I was using in version 4.6 and in version four, I believe, or 4.5, never had any issues. So that's my computer specs. Uh, let's try a couple other. Let's try like the British channel. Let's see how that works. Okay, seems to move around the, the screen pretty well. No issues there. Kick boom, okay. Okay, that seems to work well. Now the other thing we could do is we could put this across maybe 15 channels just to see like we did in the last video, loading up a bunch of plugins. Seem to work very well, but we'll check all the different plugin manufacturers just to be sure. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have this across what? 15, 16 tracks? Sounds terrible, I know. Uh, okay, seems to be fine. Let's see what our performance meter is, 19%. Okay, no problem there. Let's try a couple of others. Let's go, I don't know. Uh, I know their tape machines are very CPU heavy. So let's try dropping a couple of the tape machines just to see how it behaves. These things are CPU hogs. Hogs, they are. Let me take off the J37 from the last video here. Here is a tape machine. Oh, by the way, the T-Rex tape machines are fabulous, but you can only use them on a few tracks. Make it see, 35%. <laughs> okay, seems to be okay, no problem. Uh, let's try a couple of others and then we'll go on to somebody else. Let's try the uh, Fairchild emulation. We could drop this on a bunch of tracks as well. Okay, so they're loading up fine. No jittering, no latency. This is a very nice compressor as well. I think I have some reviews on a couple of these that you can take a look at. Load up a whole bunch of them just to see. What do we have going on here? Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. So, no issues from what I can tell. Okay, so T-Rex, you know, we put a few of them on. They seem like they work okay, no issues there. That's a good, good sign. Let's go over to, let me take off the one off the master bus here. Save all this down. Um, what was the next one that I got asked about? Oh, just regular Slate Digital plugins. Not Trigger specifically, but like the regular Slate Digital stuff. So let's try that as well. Um, let me see here. So we could drop a bunch of EQs on here if we want. Seems okay. And let's put a, let's put a bunch of them on here just to see. Okay, it takes a second here as we're loading up 13 of these all at once. Okay, seems okay. Okay, that all seems to be working just fine. 
Uh, let's see here. I may have screwed up something in the session, but this is just a this is just a, a practice. Let's try the um, let's try the virtual mix rack. I mean, now this is a huge one, right? We well, if you have Slate Digital, you use this, and I use this all the time. So this one has to work well, or I can't use Studio One Five. <laughs> okay, seems okay. No lagging, no latency, no nothing. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try a bunch of tape machines just to, although I think I might have done this in part one. I don't remember. Anyway, we'll show it again. <laughs> okay. Let's check out this. Okay. Seems okay. Um, we'll try another one more slate here. Maybe we'll try a handful of their reverbs just because we can. We're gonna have a ton of reverb here. How about that, huh? Again, no lagging. Okay, that all seems good. Okay, so the normal, regular old slate digital stuff, minus of trigger, the drum replacement, Seemed fine. Um, the last one that I got asked about was a SD5, Slate Digital's uh, SD5, um, the um, SSD5, sorry, drum replacement. Now, uh, this works better than what, than what was working. Um, I'll turn this up so you can hear it a little bit. Remember, Superior Drummer was another one that was lagging. I'm happy to report SSD5 seems fine doesn't seem to have any of the same little quirky things that Superior Drummer ha 3 has. Now I know Superior Drummer 3, there's a lot more under the hood there, a lot more features. This is a more, although it's fantastic, right? I mean, uh, we got this, load up a couple of kits just to see how it works. What's going on here? Did I not? Blackbird. There we go. Okay, no lagging, everything is perfect real time. If I go to grooves and play some grooves. And you come back here. You can see how it's just perfectly smooth in real time. Superior Drummer wasn't like this. It kind of skipped hesitant a little bit. I don't seem to have any of the Chris Lord Algae stuff here, which is kind of weird because I do have it. <laughs> I might not have the license set up right. Okay, no big deal. Let's go to a few others, just so you can see SD. Okay, perfect. When I click on these, there's absolutely no latency. Definitely wasn't this smooth in Superior Drummer 3. Again, going to different grooves, just picking stuff. You can see the metering. Perfect. I'll tell you, this thing sounds amazing too. I wish they had the tracker feature and some of the other things that Superior Drummer has that this doesn't have, but this this thing always just sounds great. We'll try something different. Again, I don't, perfect. You can see when you click on it, even the kick beater, perfect, perfect time to latency. Again, Superior Drummer wasn't like this. So SD5, SSD5, Steven Slate works perfectly. Okay, so that's, um, that's our test uh, for this time around. We'll do another video where I have a few more specific plugins that people ask me about. So again, um, leave, my, leave comments below. Let me know if you're having any, you know, any issues. Go back and watch all the other parts to this and you can get to see these things in action. I'm doing this really for you guys because you've asked me to do it. Um, uh, also, again, make sure you leave a support ticket for PreSonus if you're having any issues and utilize the user form as well. And if there's any specific plugins that you want me to test, let me know what they are. I can't promise you I have them, but I, I do have more third-party plugins than the average home studio guy because I do this for a living and I have many, many companies. And so I can check them out. I don't have all the companies, but if I have it, I will definitely try it out for you. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate all of your help and we'll get through this together. Uh, we will get this thing and I hope PreSonus will see some of this stuff and hopefully be able to help uh, diagnose what's going on. But at least in this part, all these other plugins, the ones that we looked at today, work pretty well. So until the next video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I will see you guys all soon. Take care, everyone.